Hey, welcome back to Leah's Leaves. Do you see what I see? The place I just moved is the house my uncle built when I was a kid, and he was a young married man. And he passed away a few years ago, and my aunt is moving on with her life and renting this space. So I have this beautiful place to live that's owned and uh, built by family. It's unique. But it's got a yard in it that uh, just needs some TLC. When he was alive, my uncle, you know, maintained all the blueberry shrubs and the orchard trees here. Uh, but since his passing, it there hasn't been much pruning and stuff. So I was sitting here, you know, just doing my garden planning and thinking about one of the things I really want to tackle in the as soon as we get some thawing is to begin pruning back some of these trees and preparing them for a healthy season. And while I was doing that, I was unpacking here to where I've just moved. And Oh, sorry, I got soot in my face. I just noticed that I was building a fire downstairs. Um, I discovered a book that I had bought, and I'd given it to my mom because she had just built a cabin, but um, she gave it back to me, and I forgot that it was packed in my stuff. It is a woodworker's journal... Uh, it's from the Complete Woodworkers Library, which is a series of woodworking books on various subjects. And I'm going to show you this book, and I'm going to show you some of the beautiful and very simple to make rustic touches that I can create for my garden using the brush that I'm going to trim off of these trees to repurpose them and put them back in the garden. I am so excited about this now. I've been thinking about it for days. And so I want to walk you through this book and show you, I have bookmarked the projects that I want to tackle personally. And uh, now that you've seen the, the branches that I'm working with, and in a previous video, I showed you the plot. That it's an in-ground bed. It's solarized right now. It's perfectly flat. It's perfectly sunny. It's a really nice little place. Um, I'll still have my containers and my kiddie pools, and I'll still do vertical gardening, and I'll show you some of that. But... Uh, I haven't had a main in-ground bed uh, since I was a kid of my own to kind of play with. And so a lot of the structures that I'm going to show you in this book will end up in that new garden plot. So come along with me, help me brainstorm, help me get creative. And uh, I would love to hear your feedback in the comments of projects you see in there that you would like to watch being made. Because if you see something that's interesting to you, I'll make a video about it as I'm building it. Okie doke, so here we are. I picked up this book for $2.99 at the Green Valley Book Fair in Mount Crawford, Virginia. Uh, if you're ever traveling through North, Northern Virginia and would love a really great outing, you should visit the book fair. It's right off of Route 81, um, not far south of Harrisonburg. This is from the Woodworker's Journal series, and it's Rustic Garden Projects, 28 Decorative Accents That You Can Build. Here are some examples on the cover. The book is edited, or the author, excuse me, is Don King, D-A-W-N, Don King from Ontario. Um, and the Green Valley Book Fair, I'll put the address in the description box if you're ever interested in going and visiting. I can't guarantee you'll find this particular book, but they always have thousands and thousands of books. So these are the tools you'll need. And I have everything except that hand saw, the pruning saw. Um, but I'm going to ask around because I have relatives who, who also uh, do building projects and work with wood and stuff. And I bet there's something floating around in my, among my aunts, uncles, or cousins. So what you see clockwise from the left is a power drill, a stapler, a cordless drill, a bypass uh, pruning shears, the pruning saw, that's the down, that's the center, and then, of course, a hammer. And then you'll also want, um, these are additional tools that could be useful. Um, I don't plan on using an angle grinder or spade bits or ratcheted shears or anything like that. Those are for kind of special joining, and if you get a little fancier, uh, the projects that I picked in the book are fairly simple. And then, of course, different kinds of fasteners, decking screws, drywall screws, and your bits and your uh, staples. 
this is the part that I'm most excited about is gathering the materials because I already have picked out the items that I want to make and I even know uh, how I'll use them but now it's like foraging so naturally I live in Pennsylvania now and the name of my state is quite literally Penn's Woods so I will not be at a loss <laughs> for finding these kinds of materials uh, look at these branches interesting shapes here's a collection of the author's materials just you know sh she says in the book that she'll just like go to somebody's house and ask permission from the property owners to harvest materials and uh, you know they're usually happy because she's either clearing away brush that they don't need or they're excited about what it's going to become because she makes these amazing uh, artistic pieces so just outside um, I didn't even show you the front yard yet, but there's even more trees down there in the front yard that are also ready to be pruned and, uh, you know, repurposed. So right in my backyard without even leaving the property, I probably have a ton of stuff and could get started right away on some of these projects. The first thing I want to create is a pot trellis. I have some very large planters that I'm going to use for my extra large um, pepper varieties like my Count Dracula pepper, because those can grow four or five feet tall. Those can get pretty big. Um, I'll also have peas, and I like to, and, and sweet peas as well. And they like to have something to climb on, even though I, most peas stay small enough, you don't need to stake them. But if you do, then they save ground space, you can plant other things around them. So I love the look of this pot trellis. And there's nothing fancy about it. They, she picked sticks in the correct shape and then just orients them on the framework to be a fan shape. So you don't even need straight sticks. There's no, you don't have to soak the sticks. You're not bending the sticks, nothing. You're picking up sticks exactly as they are and employing them. So there's going to be a center stake that will be driven into the ground and then a brace at the bottom that will hold all of the sticks together and a couple little decorative uh, bent pieces of wood naturally bent pieces of wood just like you see there and then look at this particular detail because you'll see this as the book goes on you see that branch the branch is just connected to the stick and it's been fastened to the cross beam and then again to the top to just reinforce the structure and keep it from separating it just strengthens the structure and it adds rustic character to it isn't that completely cool i'm gonna make a few of these and i you can do them in different sizes they don't even um in the book she'll frequently just say you know make it to whatever size you want and then she'll say what size she used but i'm not locked into that size so you can see that's a pretty big uh hosta behind that trellis and so that trellis is probably a good you know three three and a half feet tall I can make them taller I can make them smaller the next project I want to do is this hanging rack this is such a cool idea the four vertical beams that she uses are really just sticks with branches look at that they're just sticks with their branches and then cut so that the branches and the little elbow between the main trunk and the branch or between the branch and the stem becomes the hook and then you just brace it on the top and the bottom with some cross pieces of wood and then use your um your thinner wood like willow branches or um, young saplings while they're still tender enough to bend and they not only add the rustic touch but they add reinforcement to the structure i love the idea of the variegated hooks the different heights different sizes uh, so this is the kind of thing that I would hang on my fence and use it to like hang my hat my gardening hat um, my gloves I could poke my uh, shears on there etc just while I'm working there I think this is one of the coolest ideas I have ever seen and it's perfect for a window box so that's what I want to use mine for I have a window box and in it, I was going to plant Tumbling Tom tomatoes, some blue lobelia, and creeping thyme. 
So that's what I'm thinking of doing with this project. So planter easel. And the only thing I'll need that I don't have is to run around a couple thrift stores and find a, a wall hanging or, or a painting it, or just an empty picture frame. Or I'll search around Facebook Marketplace and see if anybody's giving one away. And other than that, it's literally sticks. <laughs> sticks and then the planter. This is where the planter box fits, where it says flower box. Like, this one has instructions on how to make your own, but I'm not going to make my own. I'm just going to use the one I already have. So I'll quite literally just be building a simple easel out of some straight sticks and then putting a brace against the easel to hold the frame and then fasten the picture frame to the easel and slide my flower box right in there with my Tumbling Tom Tomatoes, Lobelia, and Creeping Time. This is another one. I would like to make um, two of these so that it looks like, like a little garden tea party. This planter chair. Again, there's no bending of the wood involved. You, buy, you find the, the branches that are already naturally bent like that. And it's just a chair frame with the, the cut pieces of wood making up the frame and then a planter box. Um, for this one, I'm not even going to build the planter box. What I'm going to do instead is repurpose an old uh, dresser drawer and just build the frame around the dresser drawer. I mean, look at how cool that leg is. I'm going to zoom in there. That's just an old, gnarly looking piece of, it's just a log. But it has so much character. Isn't that just gorgeous? top rail, the rail, the back legs, the arms, the bracing rail that you stick your uh, planter box on, your front legs. And of course, you can build your own box and there are instructions in the book on how to do that, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to repurpose a drawer. Somebody else did it for me. Ha ha. How cool is that though? This is the one I'm most excited about. I don't know how many times I've already said that in this video, but this time I mean it. It's a frame trellis and I'm going to use it. Uh, so my garden plot, hang on a second, I'll turn the camera around and show you. You can actually, now that we're looking out the window, you can kind of see the outline of it indented in the snow. So it's like 10 feet wide and 14 feet long and I have room to expand around it. But what I want to do with this with this particular fence trellis is put two of them at a 45 degree angle to each other, or excuse me, a 90 degree angle at each other so that they form a corner at the northeast and northwest corners of that bed. Now, as we were looking out the window, we were facing south. So the side of the garden closest to the house is the north side. And so that's where I would put this um, trellis. And I would do, you know, pardon my mess there. My cats were getting into my piles. <laughs> but I'm going to use my hand for a second. So I have to put this down. So here's my little garden plot. And I'm going to put an L shape of this trellis fence on one side. And an L shape on the trellis fence of the other side. And I'm going to make them about 8 feet tall. And then add a cross beam to the top. And my intention then is to grow... Uh, some of my bigger plants that would take up a lot of room in the garden. I can grow squashes vertically up here. Uh, I don't grow big things. I don't grow enormous pumpkins or squashes. They just be small, uh, personal size things like a table queen acorn squash, for example. They don't take up much space and I can grow them vertically. And then as the fruits are developing, just um, put them in a sling to hold them in place and keep them from falling, falling from their own weight. Cantaloupes can go up here. Um, this is also where I could grow my uh, Chinese red noodle beans. And they can grow vertically against. So I have these two uh, corners, which means four trellises. That would all be about uh, like six feet wide uh, and eight feet tall. Or four feet wide and eight feet tall. I'll have to get out there and kind of mess with the measurements. That's the beauty of projects like this, though 
is you can make them as long, as short, as tall as you need to to accommodate your own space. But look at what they did here. The the posts, the top rails, the poles, and the bottom rail are all solid wood that have had all the branches cut off. And then the vertical posts in the middle that are giving the thing structure are just tree branches with stems. And then the stems are are fastened to the frame or to uh, each other to add structure and hold the thing together. And then to hold the thing in in place would I'll just use uh, T posts or rebar and PVC, probably some T posts. I have both, so I just have to look at, you know, what I can spare. Uh, this is the next project I want to try. This one isn't as urgent. But it did look pretty, and it looked pretty simple to make. So this is a garden shelf. And again, it's just these, you know, the beams, the a, a curved piece of wood, and some straight legs, front and back, and straight braces across the front, and then a couple of cedar boards, just shelf boards. And then you add your little decorative rustic pieces in the back that not only add the rustic touches, but also reinforce the structure and just uh, either staple them in place or use, you know, nails or screws, depending on how thick they are. So that's uh, going to be a lot of fun. I like working with tools. I like working with wood. I like the idea of repurposing some of the plants that are already on the property and foraging for some. Now that I've looked through this book also, it just kind of everywhere I look, everywhere I'm driving, I see interesting shapes in trees and I see branches falling to the ground uh, that are lying on the ground and they're just sitting there. Nobody's doing anything with them. Like you can make all kinds of stuff with this. Who knows, maybe the entrepreneur in me will come up with a way to get good enough at this pretty quickly that I could turn it into a little side business. I don't know. Anyway, um, there are other projects in this book. I'm going to leave the, the ISBN information in the description if you ever wanted to get a hold of your own copy of this. And you can see some of their other ideas. The other ideas in the book, I either just don't need or, frankly, they're a little more complicated than I want to invest time in. That's all. Um, but the projects that I picked are relatively simple. A lot of the material I already have on hand or can easily get it on, on the cheap or even for free. Um... And the only th other thing I'll say is if you want to attempt one of these and you don't have a copy of the book and you're just kind of eyeballing it, just make sure you drill pilot holes before you put in any screws, um, especially because you're going to be not always, uh, not always going to be using green wood. And uh, the older or drier the wood, the more likely it is it's going to split if you don't take care of it while you're fastening it together. And always ask permission if you're foraging on somebody's private property. And if they say no, don't take it. <laughs> anyway, I'm very excited about these projects. If you saw one in here that, um, that you would like to see how it's made, like you want to watch me make it so that you can get an idea of how to do it, then leave a comment below and I will make a video of it as I'm working on these projects. I'll certainly come back on here later in the season and show you the finished products at least so you can see how they turned out. And um, also, if you have any of these cute little rustic touches that you've shown showcased in your own garden, I'd love to see those. So drop a link to your own video or let us know your um, YouTube channel and the people who are watching this video can stop by and check out yours, okay? I'm learning a lot and sharing it here, and I hope you'll come grow with me. Bye!